Newton's third law says that all forces are created in interactions between pairs of objects. If I want to create a force on myself in order to change my motion from being at rest to one of motion off in this direction, such as when I jump from one place to another, I have to create that force by interacting with something. In this particular case, I interact with the thing that I touch, which is the floor of the room. And I've learned from childhood how to flex my knees in just the right way so that when I then straighten them out, I create this interaction with the thing that I touch, the floor, which creates a force which accelerates me off in this direction. But the third law says you can't just create one force. They all are created in pairs. And uh, when I create a force on me, um, it's by interacting with the second object in the pair. In this particular case, the floor of the room. So if the floor of the room exerts a force on me, then the third law says me exerts a force on the floor. And the force exerted on the floor will be of exactly the same strength as the force on me, but in exactly the opposite direction. Now I saw what happened when that force or that particular strength was exerted on me. It caused me to accelerate as I jumped. But if I look at the, at the floor, which felt the same strength of force, I don't see any perceptible acceleration of the floor. I mean, it just stays there. It's at rest for all practical purposes, remains at rest. Why, if I'm exerting a force on the floor, doesn't it accelerate? Well, you have to understand that the floor is connected to the building. The building is connected to bedrock, and the bedrock is connected to the earth. So that when I exert a force on the floor, for all practical purposes, I'm trying to accelerate the entire mass of the earth. The acceleration is the force divided by the mass. And with that very, very, very large mass of the earth, I get a barely perceptible or no perceptible acceleration at all given the strength of the force arising from this third law interaction. Let me illustrate the point that I just made with what we call the Kamikaze Express. It's a little railroad track with a train. If the train is to move on the railroad track, and that's an accelerated motion if it goes in a circle, then there must be a force on the train. That force arises at a third law interaction. In this particular case, it's an interaction between the train and the thing that it touches, which is the tracks, or which are the tracks. So, if I put the train on the track and start it, there's a force exerted on the train by the track as the train goes around in its circular path. The third law says that if there is a force created on the train, then there is a force exerted by the train on the track. This is the third law pair of forces. The train track ordinarily is fastened to the earth. Consequently, when the force exerted on the track by the train is exerted, the track itself does not accelerate in any perceptible way because to accelerate it would be to accelerate the mass of the entire Earth to which the track is attached. But this particular track is not attached to the Earth. And consequently, when the force is exerted by the train on the track, it's quite adequate to cause the track to accelerate in a perceptible way. So, if I let the train go this, this time, you'll see that the track moves that way even as the train moves in the opposite direction. <laughs>